Would you like to have a better understanding of movements in plants? If so, let's look at tropism and gnastic movement. And I will be helping our teacher today find tropism and gnastic movement. Identify and explain types of tropism and gnastic movements. Distinguish between tropism and gnastic movement. And I first day back at school is so excited to share with junior school tropism. Tropism is a growth or turning movement of plant in response to a stimulus. There are some characteristics of tropism. It's usually directional, irreversible, and of course, it's usually a growth movement. Gnastic movement, on the other hand, is a type of response to a stimulus or a movement of a plant in response to a stimulus. And of course, it is characterized as non-growth movement, non-directional movement, and of course, it is a reversible movement. Let's look at the gnastic movement with the pea plant. The pitcher plant will close on contact with the prey. The pitcher plant is a carnivorous plant, and once the plant would have gone inside of this trumpet, what would have happened is that it would have closed and thereafter open and pretty much make way for another prey. The Venus flytrap is also another plant that shows gnastic movement. It too closes on contact. We're seeing there an organism being locked inside the Venus flytrap. Get help with CSET Biology SBA Labs and Human and Social Biology SBA Labs at tcp-academy.com. Tim had questions. He wanted to know where he could get help his SBA Labs. His parents searched but could not find that experience. Tim also made some calls, however, could not find the help he needed. Tim needed an experience he could trust to help him get over the hurdle of SBAs as success was in sight. He met the guides from tcp-academy.teachable.com and they designed a program to help him. tcp-academy.teachable.com was able to help him. So too, they can help you. Sign up tcp-academy.teachable.com for help with your SBAs in biology and human and social biology. mimosa plant are the shame old lady it is showing gnastic movement and let's be reminded that gnastic movement is reversible non-directional and it's not a growth movement if you observe here even though the plant is being affected by this external stimulus it's not the entire plant that is showing this movement so as we go through we realize that leaf by leaf the changes are evident. Gnastic movement is also evident with the sunflower. As it responds to light or heat, we are seeing that with the tulip and sunflower, as the head of the sunflower moves through the course of the day as it follows the sun. What's a stimulus? A stimulus is a change in the environment. And a change in the environment could be from cold to hot or hot to cold, dark to light or pretty much water within the environs of the plant positive tropism what's that it's pretty much a growth response towards a stimulus a growth response away from a stimulus is known of negative tropism let's look at the example below this plant is on its side the blue arrow shows an indication of positive tropism where the plant is going towards the sun. This is referred to as positive phototropic reaction. The white arrow shows the root going downward, and that is, of course, a positive geotropic reaction. So, the shoot is showing a negative geotropic reaction, 
However, positive phototropic reaction, while the root is showing a negative phototropic reaction, but a positive geotropic reaction. And this is all caused by the hormone we call axin. There are types of tropism. And once we think about tropism, three things will come to mind. It has directional growth. It's a growth movement. And of course, it is irreversible. Now, types of tropism would include things like phototropism, which is pretty much response to light, geodis geotropism, growth towards the soil, hydrotropism, growth towards the water, hematropism, growth in response to a chemical, thermotropism, growth in response to temperature, and thigmatropism, growth in response to touch. We're going to be looking at the examples now. With phototropism, the plant will grow towards light as the animation and screen. So with this type of tropism, you're seeing the plant growing towards the light. In the next type of tropism, which is geotropism, the plant will grow towards the earth. There we have the roots showing positive geotropism as the roots are growing towards the sun. Then we look at hydrotropism, which is a growth movement towards water. So there we have the water and the roots are all growing in the direction of the water. Then we have chemotropism, which is a growth response or growth movement due to a chemical stimulus. Example, the growth of pollen tube to the ovule or a flower changing into a fruit. Examples of chemotropism. Thermotropism, growth movement, bending, turning of organism due to directional heat. Example, curling of leaves, collapsing of the petiole. Then there is stigmatropism, which is growth response brought about by touch or contact. So there we have a runner, and as soon as it touches the plant, you will realize that the tendril from the plant is actually coiling around the support structure. There we have it on the wall being protected and on the board. So the type of tropism are phototropism, geotropism, hydrotropism, chemotropism, thermotropism, and of course, pigmatropism. What really causes the plant to grow the way it does? The hormone axin, which is of course a plant hormone from the root and shoot tips of plants. They regulate the growth of the plant parts by causing cells to elongate. Axin effect and fallen plants. In the shoot, axin stimulates growth on the lower side of a stem, causing it to grow upwards or towards the sunlight. On the root, the effect is somewhat different. Axin inhibits the growth of the lower part of a plant root. This causes the root to bend downward or to the soil. Here we have an example. This plant is on the side, would have grown up, and the root is pretty much growing downward. This growth is because of an accumulation of axin on the lower side of the stem here, which causes the cells here to elongate, grow much faster and longer than those on this side, in the plant turning upward. In the root, it is somewhat different as it accumulates on the lower side here, but pretty much inhibits the growth of the cells on the lower side, hence the root turning downward or towards the side. Importance of tropism. It's important for plants to find light for the process of photosynthesis. It is important for plants to find water for the process of photosynthesis. It's important for anchorage so the plant will find support. It's important to find nutrient in the soil. It's important for the plant to conserve water so it can stay alive. Can you name any other? Other plant hormones include dribbling, cytokines, abscisic acid, ethene. Tell us the function of each in the comment below. This question appeared on the CSEC May-June 2017 paper and it reads, 
Item 36 refers to the following diagram illustrating an experiment. There the setup. There we have a setup. After a few days, the tallest shoot would most likely be will it be one, two, three, or will it be four? The answer here three and four, pretty much similar condition as this is a transparent cap. The cap here being removed or the tip here being removed, the shoot will not grow. Here, foil blocking the light the plant will experience a condition of etiolation and as such the cells will become elongated and this will pretty much grow much faster than those that are exposed light of course it will use a food reserve to enhance such growth here we look at an experiment that should give us an understanding of a process of etiolation now the plant A is exposed to a dark condition. We have allowed you to see somewhat what's happening there. But pretty much, it's pretty much a black, solid, dark condition. And if you observe keenly, it is growing much faster than the plant that is exposed to light that is plant. Now tell us in the comment below, how will the color of the leaves change in plant A? Why did plant A grow faster and taller than plant B. And also explain what is etiolation. Thanks much for watching. Please be reminded to join us at tcp-academy.teachable.com. You can also find us on YouTube at CSEC Biology TCP. I am Mr. Wilson. Please be reminded to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks much again. Or what? Get help with CSEC Biology SBA Labs and Human and Social Biology SBA Labs at tcp-academy.com. Tim had questions. He wanted to know where he could get help with his SBA Labs. His parents searched but could not find that experience. Tim also made some calls, however, could not find the help he needed. Tim needed an experience he could trust to help him get over the hurdle of SBAs as success was in sight. He met the guides from tcp-academy.teachable.com and they designed a program to help him. tcp-academy.teachable.com was able to help him. So too, they can help you. Sign up tcp-academy.teachable.com for help with your SBAs in biology and human and social biology.